right, Joe. Those shoes look so yellow. So gray. What are you doing? I'm going fishing. Oh yeah, it's pretty flat too. So All right, so it's not too rough. All right, so the river looks okay. Relatively flat. It's up to 53 degrees. Head on on its way up to 60. Um, if the launch ramp in the in the creek is closed, then we'll go to uh, Ryder. But what happened, right? All the tournaments were canceled. Uh -huh. There was actually three scheduled for the Hudson River. One out of Catskill, one out of Kingston, and a second one or a third one out of the uh, Roundout Creek, the Rondout Creek. Um, a lot of debris, a lot of floods. I guess we got uh, some pretty, pretty big rains on Tuesday into Wednesday, and uh, kind of filled everything all up. The Walk Hill River looked to be flowing pretty clear. It didn't look real dirty and muddy. So I expect there to be a lot of current in all the creeks. All the pipes are going to be flowing. Everyone that's a creek pipe, they're all going to be flowing. Um, it wasn't cold when it was raining. It was still 60 degrees, so it, it shouldn't cool the water down. Now, if we see anything below 55 would kind of surprise me. Um, 52 would be awesome. That's when things really get fired up. Um, so I expect to see somewhere in the, the mid to upper 50s is what we'd expect to see water. So what do you, uh, what would be your goal today of what you want to catch? I'd like to catch a three pounder. A three pounder? That should be doable. And what do you think for, uh, for five fish between the two of us working together as a team? 15. 15? I think that's a, a medium mark. I, I think we should be able to push for, uh, I guess if we could run around, we could try to push for 17. Um, 20 might be a little challenge because of how hard you gotta push. See, the Black Creek layer was flowing clear. So I, I don't know if it's gonna be really muddied up. And that's not enough time at the wall kill muddy. Normally the Skahari flows very muddy and then that runs down the uh, Mohawk River and dumps into the Hudson. So that, that takes a while to get to us, that muddy water. Um, so even, even by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if the creeks muddied up, they'd be flowing Wednesday, Thursday. And then even by Friday, Saturday, there's still going to be some clear spots in the Hudson. It's not going to all flow out. It just doesn't flow that fast. And the tide always just pushes it out, brings it back, pushes it out, brings it back. So it shouldn't be that bad. But because of the flood stage, because of the really, really super high waters, you know, it gets a lot of the debris off the banks. You know, for years, this stuff collects up on the rocks, on the banks, the wind pushes it over. And then when you get them really, really high tides, it'll float all that timber. And then if you have strong enough winds to get it blown off the bank versus blown onto the bank, then that's when you'll get a lot of debris and stuff floating around in the river. So whenever I drive to the lakes and I talk about goals for the amount of fish we wanna catch for the day, you know why I do that? Well, I'm trying to educate you guys on what you should expect to catch, right? So when you go into a body of water, if, if you know that it should take 15 to 17 pounds to win, um, then you don't obviously know that six, seven, eight, nine pounds is gonna do anything. Right, but if you're going to a place that's historically 10, 11 pounds to win, 12 pounds to win, and you catch a couple of really good fish and shoot up to 15, then you know you have a legitimate shot for you know first, and you have a legitimate shot for big fish of the day. So you can plan your day as you start fishing as to what you're catching. So you go to a place. Um, 
you know, like Mayapak Lake should take 15 plus to win, but it's kind of rebounded. There's a ton of small fish and you're gonna cycle through a lot of fish. Um, so you're gonna have a hard time getting off of that 10 to 12. You know, we used to always say that that 14 pounds was the hurdle on Mayapak back when I was young, when I would be fishing. Uh, when the weeds first disappeared uh, and it would get tough in the summer, if you got over 14, then you had a legitimate shot. Then as the fall came, now it started getting up into the 16 to 20 pound range. So what's the other thing you do when you have 20 pounds in the live well? Don't run so hard. No, you run just as hard. Don't get overconfident. Don't get overconfident. Don't relax, don't set back. Still push like you don't have anything in the live well because now it's even harder, right? Because you're trying to improve over 20 and it's even harder. You know, and it just recently happened. Um, you know, we, we shot up to, to 19 pounds and you know, that's good sack on the Hudson River, but you gotta just keep pushing. You know, we get up to 22 pounds and we're still pushing it just as hard as when we had no fish in the live well because you never know. And sure enough, you know, second place was just a hair under 21 pounds and one more good fish for them and they would have blew us right out of the water. So I've always learned you just, you never give up. You're never satisfied. When you're competitive fishing, you know, you're, uh, you're fishing for five bites. When you're fun fishing, you're fishing for as many bites as you can get. There's a, a, a distinct difference between fishing for five bites and just fishing four bites. Um, you catch a lot of big fish on that little tiny Ned rig, right? But generally speaking, you're gonna weed through a ton of small fish to get to that big fish or to catch a good limit, you know? Um, you catch a ton of fish and get to 16 pounds, but how do you get to 20, right? And that's why I throw big baits, jigs, you know, things like that. I'm not getting as many bites, but I'm getting big bites. Uh, the bigger bites, you know. Uh, you throw a, a, a spinner bait, you know, you see how I, I say that I have my small mouth spinner bait and I have my large mouth spinner bait. You know, same color skirt, same color everything. One's got two small double willow bleed blades, and That's one's got favorite. one single large blade. My favorite is the double willow. I know. I can tell. That's the one you always want to throw. So the whole idea is when you launch the boat, right, you start throwing some baits, and you try to get the fish to start talking to you. You start getting bites. If you don't ever get any bites, it's hard. You know, the, the fish are telling you what they don't want, but they're not, they're not communicating what they want and how they want it. You start getting a consistent bite, um, then you kind of get some information collected up and you kind of know what to go after. If you're bringing your baits in and you see a bunch of follows, you know, a lot of fish coming up behind it, that means you're close. You might be a color, you might be a speed. You might be a cadence. There, there's something that's attracting them, but there's not the part that's triggering them, right? And again, you think on the Hudson River, how many, how many spinner baits do you think these fish see, right? How many jigs and crank baits do you think these fish see? Especially this time of year. You know, it's it's usually bumper boats. Um, fish do tend to collect up on good spots. You know, there's good areas. And, um, you know, that's one of the big things about the Hudson River, right? Is, are you a run and gunner? Or are you gonna cover a ton of water and hit a lot of key areas? Or are you gonna take just one of the best areas and just fish it all day? Fish it through a whole entire tide cycle. Um, you know, things like that. Because I found like the last four tournaments we fished on the river, you know, two quality spots, albeit community holes, um, I couldn't get on the fish because there was just, you know, there was always a boat there. And, and I'm not one to pull up on somebody. Uh, 
you'll see that's why I actually stopped fishing a lot of the big fall tournaments is because it's, it's what I call bumper boats. You know, guys will pull right up on you. Uh, you know Port Ewan Water Tank. I've seen when there was four to five boats fishing that. And I think one's crowded. You kind of get an opportunity to mull around. You get an opportunity to kind of experiment and you know ease up back off but when you've got four boats fishing on it you are you are hunkered down and you're not moving so what do you think open that up the what? back of that jacket look at the back of that jacket what? yeah what if we find out where uh where they had them made maybe we get the same logo and everything and just do team morgan fishing Ooh. what do you think um get one for Mama Cat, Papa Bear, Hammer, Hogmaster. Wow, that's a lot of cars coming. Okay, here we go. We're gonna hit, we're gonna curb it. No, oh, thank you. I was able to not curb it. Curbing it is when you take out your tires, man. You can't be slamming into the curbs. So where was I? Got any questions about today? Why a question I'm gonna have is why are they not biting? Why are they not biting? Is it because, uh, you know, I used to, when I was younger, I used to believe that the fish just weren't there. They were somewhere else. What did I say? Uh, but I think the fish are there, they're just not eating what I'm throwing. And I've always been stubborn and pig-headed on what to throw. You know, I'm generally not that guy that's got 15 different types of soft plastic laying in the bottom of the boat. Um, sometimes I connect and we catch a lot of fish. Other times we don't connect and we don't catch any fish. So I've always had the philosophy of uh, just show the bait that I know that works to as many fish as I could possibly show it to and I'll finally trick one in the bite as opposed to show the same fish every single bait that I own. <laughs> and then I'll trick one into bite. But there's two, two total different trains of thought. Uh, one thing that the, the, the real experienced guys will tell you is always fish where the fish are going to. Don't fish where they're coming from. So you wanna fish in a place like, uh, you know, like the barge, you fish in a barge. You know, as the tide cycles and the water moves, you know, there could be fish coming in all day or there could be fish going out all day, right? So you are you want to be in a spot where you're on a, a cycle where they're coming to you. They're not, they're not leaving, you know. So if you got a feeding point like a pipe, you know, you could stay at the pipe and make multiple casts versus going up and down the shoreline looking to see where they are, right? Because they, uh, they aren't always on the pipe when they're in a... Uh, I don't want to say negative mood, but when they're not in a active feeding mood, right? Because you know what it's like when they're in a feeding mood, right? You just throw it out there and they slam it before you even get a crank on the reel. Or you got to make five casts to the same spot and you finally trick one in the bike and you bring it in and you just barely got the trailer hook in his nose. Because he really didn't want to eat the bait and he just you finally just convinced him to eat it. <laughs> 